Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So let's look at Bitcoin. What is this new bullish pattern that I have detected? And also, let's talk about the debt ceiling. Is it finally over? Well, let's discuss. Let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you guys are hanging in there. Big one is hanging in there, still kind of hovering, not doing much. And that's because, you know what? You know what? The Senate is about to, actually today actually was a decent day for markets. But right now, you know, the Senate is ready to vote. So this could finally come to a conclusion. I don't think there's any talk about Somehow this is not go past the Senate. There were some talks about, you know, adding things and, 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 you know, that's just go derail it. So they're just go vote as is right now, right? Like the U S should take this seriously. Um, we don't want a situation where, you know, a whole bunch of stuff are added and then it doesn't get approved and the U S defaults. That would just be absolutely horrible. Right? So, uh, so hopefully, Maybe by tonight, we won't know if this is resolved or not, and then the ceiling will be lifted off the markets, I guess, so to speak, right? Until we have to worry about inflation, until you know the money printer starts spinning up again, and then we have to wor worry about the Fed you know, with their rate hikes. But the good thing is, I think in June, we're looking at no more rate hikes, at least for this month, right? But there's no guarantees that the next FOMC uh, meeting won't bring another rate hike. So we will see. We will see. But this is the big thing that is being voted on today. Also, something else that really had nothing to do with crypto, but I'm going to mention anyways, because a lot of people are talking about it, is Apple's entrance into VR. We know that Meta, or aka Facebook, renamed their entire company to Meta because they want to contract Metaverse. So far, been absolutely, I don't know, horrendous. Meta loses tens of billions of dollars per year, right? But now Apple's getting in, so it may change the game. Now, remember last time this happened, a lot of AI plays or metaverse plays within crypto pumped up, right? So will we see the same thing happen with Apple? Maybe, but you know, Zuck, is uh, he kind of teased the new Quest 3 VR headset, which is around $500, right? Reasonable. But people are saying Apple's VR headset is going to be like $3,000. So what does that mean, right? Apple has not had a product since the watch. Watch, I don't know. I don't know if you consider a success or not. I do know a lot of people wear it, but still, it's not a big moneymaker for Apple. The biggest moneymaker, of course, is still the iPhone and the App Store, right? So is this going to make big money for Apple? Probably not, but we will see. Will they bring some crypto innovations, some, some metaverse innovation, AI innovations that we haven't seen before? Maybe, hopefully, and hopefully this could also kickstart some of the metaverse plays once again. And I have some news about metaverse plays in a little bit, but this is also the big thing. So we'll just see. We'll just see. Uh, what else is going on today? Uh, Coinbase. Coinbase is coming out with derivatives on Bitcoin and Ether. Futures contracts approved by the CFTC. So now Coinbase wants to get in the game. I don't know if this is a good deal or not, a good thing or not. I mean, CME, they already have Bitcoin futures. We always have these futures expirations. They used to bring a lot of volatility. These days, not so much. Volume of futures still relatively low compared to say spot volume. Um, so I don't know if this is going to help Coinbase or not, but Coinbase had a pretty good day today. They're in their 60s, getting up to the 70s once again. So, I mean, overall, I guess it helps some, so to speak, right? Um, and they still have that lawsuit with uh, CC. Maybe they're going to win that soon. I don't even know. That, that lawsuit is more for clarity. It's just like an answer. It's not really, even if they win, it doesn't really do a whole lot. But uh, from a PR perspective, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, what else is there? Well, uh, let's see, for Bitcoin, okay, I mean, there's 
always endless, endless data, endless charts, endless on-chain metrics that all show Bitcoin is still healthy, even though the price is not right now. Price is stagnant, kind of hovering. People are losing interest, right? That always happens every single cycle. There will be times where it's just really, really boring. But consider it price of emission, basically, right? Because if everyone can just get in and buy Bitcoin, well, everyone will be a millionaire already. It's these phases that phase out, that weed out the unfaithful, the ones that don't have any conviction in Bitcoin. They only jumped in to make a quick buck. They don't really want to understand what it's all about, right? So these kind of phases, they weed out the general public. And the people that are in, like you and I and everyone else watching right now, right? You guys, you guys are the ones that know better, right? But if you're going off the charts, the metrics, the fundamentals, everything is increasing right now. Right now, um, entities net growth is growing by leaps and bounds right now. And part of it is due to inscriptions because inscriptions brought a lot of excitement to Bitcoin once again. There's a lot of... A lot of memes, a lot of NFTs, a lot of people talking about it. There's debates going on about it. Overall, it's bringing a lot more attention to Bitcoin right now. Now, this is what I use on my thumbnail called the bullish cipher pattern. I've never heard of this before, but you could see it starts with the X, then it goes to A, B, C, D. And what comes after D? Well, these four targets, they are what we have to look forward to. First stop is right around 36,000. Then you go up to about 42, 48, 57 thousand dollars. And this will lead us to the having event. Okay, remember with the Fibonacci levels, this is about right. So we're going to hit right around the 78.6 mark when we hit the next uh, halving event, which is right around April, May of 2024, right? So it makes sense. So if we're right around $58,000 by this time next year, okay, we will be in a very, very healthy position. Think about it. Right around 58,000, we're close to our peak of 69,000 and usually, like clockwork, every single time right after the halving event is when Bitcoin really starts moving, right? So that's what the bullish cipher pattern is, right? So there'll be a lot of up and downs, of course, a lot of volatility, maybe sometimes where you don't move, right? But ultimately, this is where Bitcoin's heading, right? Again, you don't be weeded out like the rest. You want to stay in the game, right? Um, here's one. I got to remove my camera here, but MVRV, this measures, uh, what is this measure? I think this measures the profitability of miners, right? And whenever it's bearish, it's not good, obviously, right? But whenever it starts heading upwards, very good, very good. And you can see we just barely flipped, barely flipped from bottom into profitable territory. And that usually leads do really good things, really, I don't know, pumpish stages of Bitcoin, so to speak, right? Uh, here's another one, pretty easy, pretty easy using the 50 and 100 moving average. This is on a three day scale, laid out perfectly. When to buy, when to hold, right? We are at that buy stage. When we hit the next halving event, that's when you hold. And that's when you wait for the tremendous gains. 9,000% two cycles ago, last cycle 1,200%. Where we go see this time, 1,000%, 600%, whatever it may be, it's definitely worth it to be holding, right? So there's that. And, uh, and yeah, and this is really easy. This is, this is really easy to understand, okay? If you understand nothing else I just said, just pay attention to this. You have one bear, one bear year, then you have three good years afterwards. It's really that simple. 2014, bad year, 
three good years after that. 2018, bad years, three good years after that. 2022, bad year. 2023 will be a good year. 2024 will be a good year. 2025 will be a good year. So three consecutive good years, one bad year. Probably not going to be any different this time around, right? So pretty easy to understand. All right. And then uh, some altcoin news. Chainlink. I don't hear a lot of people ask about Chainlink these days, but they are the biggest decentralized oracle we have. And they have this partnered up with Tencent Cloud to accelerate adoption of decentralized technology. Really, basically, this Chainlink has this build. So basically, it's their like, accelerator program. They want to get dApps to come on board and utilize Chainlink in their Oracle setup. So with this partnership, if you are in build, you get credit to be on Tencent Cloud, basically. You're, you're almost getting like a grant system. That's what it is, Tencent Cloud. It's like Amazon Cloud, like Google Cloud, like all these other big tech clouds, right? Basically, that's what the partnership is all about. But, you know, Chainlink, it's so necessary in the space. I know there are competitors. There are a few homegrown oracles and some projects that are, you know, um, smaller versions of Chainlink, right? But ultimately, Chainlink is the biggest by far. And really, they're used for everything from DeFi projects right to nfts to games um i mean literally everything and they have they're essentially like a cross bridge too because you can utilize Chainlink to communicate between different chains that supports Chainlink. so they got they got a lot of stuff they got a lot of stuff going on not the sexiest project but a hundred percent needed in the space also a lot of metaverse NFT stuff, right? Because of the Apple. Uh, look at this. Nike is partnering up with EA Sports, and they're going to integrate Nike NFTs that's Polygon based within EA Sports games. I don't even know how that works. But pretty soon, if you like Madden, you like FIFA, right? Pretty soon, you'll be able to collect those Nike NFTs. I don't know how it's going to work, but there's a big thing brewing right now, right? So pretty soon, maybe, maybe they don't want to say NFTs, right? Like your your Madden store or something. Whatever you collect, you don't even know it's NFT, but it's probably NFT. And then maybe you could sell it for some money, right? I just uh, I just did a space with a promising game project called uh, Bushi, and you know I was just talking about this, like Web two to Web three transition. That's the new trend, and I think it's going to work. Web 2, you use Web 2, just create a really fun game people want to play, right? Don't worry about the Web 3 elements. Don't worry about NFTs or wallets or tokens or anything like that. Get people hooked, then layer in the Web 3 elements, right, after the person cares about the game, right? And it does seem like that's the strategy many are going for. Uh, BBC and Reality Plus is bring Top Gear and Doctor Who to Sandbox. Remember, I just talked about Apple entering VR space, right? So now, if you wanted to, you don't want to watch on a traditional TV. You could be watching in your headset within the Sandbox. Kind of cool, right? Um, and I'm sure this is just the beginning. And then also Decentraland, the kind of the same thing, right? But they have their new updated marketplace. I, actually, I haven't heard much about Decentraland, but Decentraland has many of the same kind of partnerships that like fashion shows and they have a lot of brands that are showing things off. You could probably watch a movie or two inside. You have trailers, you have NFT marketplaces. Um, kind of wild, kind of wild, but you don't hear a lot about them these days. And then lastly, Lastly, uh, someone took, uh, you know, took a look at this white paper, okay, from China that CC tweeted out. And basically, this white paper from China is talking about development of Web3 technology like NFTs and metaverses because there are cities within China that's fully embracing metaverses, right? So... This, this is going to be a thing. Whether you like it or not, there are some big players in the game that's pushing 
for metaverses, right? So these projects I just mentioned, like Sandbox and Meta and uh, Decentraland, right? They could tremendously benefit from again, like someone like Apple getting into this space. We'll see. They were pumping when you know Facebook went to Meta, right? Maybe Apple will do the same thing for these companies. So we will see. We will see. All right. That's pretty much it. Let's do some uh, Q and A. Oops, I was on mute. I'm sorry. I was reading a joke from someone. Someone saying, uh, my my wife says his boyfriend, her boyfriend has a bigger snack than me. I was going to say, I don't know what happened to the snack. Uh, after my spaces, they kind of dumped down a little bit. But they're still holding. So they're still doing a good job. But other memes have been really, really, really uh, suffering. Uh, Tom says, I'm betting Mark will buy Decentraland. I, I would not doubt that. I mean, Facebook, their new model is just to acquire. They can't innovate. They really don't have any innovations. They just acquire, acquire, acquire. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Rick, we're all George loving crypto. Appreciate that, Rick. Uh, Barry, minor corrections. Republicans try to add 10 amendments. Democrat 1 to the bill all being voted on right now. Well, that's no good. That's no good, but we'll see. We'll see if they get it through. I thought it was no amendments, but I guess they want amendments. They want to complicate things. Can you explain to people that 98% of shit coins lose value against BDC when price in BDC? Yeah. Because BTC keeps on rising and everything else does not. Uh, at least not in the same um, not in the same percentage, right? Even if you're holding on something that doesn't go down. But if it doesn't go up in the same manner or same percentage or same gain as Bitcoin, then you're losing against Bitcoin, so that's no good. Uh, I think Nuggets are killing the heat right now. So that's kind of expected. I don't know if a lot of you guys not tuning in right now is watching the game, but. Pepe. What is Pepe up to? I have no idea what Pepe is up to these days. It's still trending. Well, they, they're kind of holding. You know, but I don't know what they're up to, really. Or they have no plans. I don't know. No idea. Oh, you know what? I got something funny to show you guys. You know, this morning I covered news that... Um, oh, there's me. There's me. Uh, I covered news about someone saying, uh, send ETH, but don't get... You're not going to get anything back, right? So I, I put this up. 
uh, do not send any ETH to this wallet. <laughs> just for fun. Just for fun. And even then, a few people donated. Um, yeah, so I just thought that's an interesting experiment. I'm doing some crazy stuff on Twitter now, right now. I'm trying to get engagement up, right, by the way. So, and I know my audience on my Twitter is very different than YouTube. So I'm kind of treating it too differently. And I'm not reposting videos on Twitter anymore because I found out that's actually a bad thing. Elon does not like that. So I won't be doing that anymore. So is the U.S. going to default or not? Andrew, no, no, I would not like to see that. Um, wisdom, patience, we must do the hard stuff, hold all and trade wisely or fear now and foam in during early or after 2024 like the herd will do. Basically, you're saying get in early, don't get in late. And that is true. That is true. Any thoughts on a Tesla Roadster, the new one or the old one? The old one, I, I, I just don't see why it's worth so much. It's gone up so much, I don't see it. The new one looks great, but you're not going to see the Tesla Roadster until like 2030 or something. Because they have much bigger things in play, including the Cybertruck, which hopefully by the end of this year, I could take delivery of one. And then, um, and then um, they got their new Model 2 that they're working on. Crypto Hound, appreciate that, my man. How do you find these projects to be on phone and pass? I used to have them apply, now they're introduced to me. So I have a few people that does amazing things for me, um, including introduce really good projects. So. That's kind of my thing. My calendar is always full. But you know, like even like a month ago, after I do my streams, right, I'm pretty free. I do spaces and, you know, talk with the team sometimes. But now it's like every single hour I'm talking to a new project or exchange or angel or VC. Like um, I'm building up a portfolio. But, yeah, that's kind of how, um, how we introduce it. We got a really good one, really good one for this week too. So last week – couldn't do it because of um, um, we had a scheduling conflict. The last two weeks we couldn't do because we one we were in Miami and last week had a scheduling conflict. This week we just recorded. There'll be a good one on Saturday. Coming to eat Tokyo next year? I may consider it. I may consider. It. I'm still trying to plan for uh, GeorgeCon 2024. May be able to do it at MGM in January. I got word that MGM is trying to fill spots, so I may be able to do it in January. Also in July, I'm trying to host a party or co-host a party in July, end of July in August, um, in Vegas. So that'll be double, double the goodness. Uh, GT, I'm, I'm, I, I'm glad to hear that. It's not very popular, but you know, it's a different vibe, right? When you're asking questions to these projects, and and we had a few that I didn't show because they're just really bad. So, um, but it's a different vibe, right? You could definitely tell when there's good leaders that know how to speak well, speak about their project in a in a very easy to understand manner. Not everyone knows how to do that, and you could tell if they they have a good project or not, right? It's uh, it's different. 
How many BD sell or buy to move the market? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. A lot. A lot. Is Hong Kong news about buying crypto scam? No, it's not, Pedro. It just takes time. There's a lot of exchanges that's still trying to get their licenses. Uh, Denver is beating Miami by 20. No surprise. I don't care. I don't care if Denver wins. They're they're going to win for sure. Uh, Jimmy Butler is not going to be coming back from this, but yeah, I don't care. I want the Lakers to go all the way. They got embarrassed, and then Celtics was almost gonna get embarrassed, but then got embarrassed in Game Seven. <laughs> Cash and then I, I'm just gonna laugh at that. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'm getting tired. I'm gonna let you guys go. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Are we going to get approval from the Senate, or is this gonna drag on for four more days? Hopefully, hopefully not. But we'll see by the time we wake up tomorrow. In the meantime, look forward to this. And look forward to this and this. Do not give up on Bitcoin, especially now. We are definitely going to see greater days in the future. So don't get weeded out. All right, guys. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link in the description below. All right. Take care. Have a good one.